for taking performance enhancing drugs has been picked for Team GB at the London Olympics. He's among a group of eight men from which British Cycling will select five to compete in road cycling this summer. He made the shortlist after the British Olympic Association lifted a lifetime ban for athletes convicted of doping. Sky's Neil Patterson has more. Once British Cycling's bright young hope, in 2004 David Miller was banned for two years after admitting he'd taken performance enhancing drugs. Now he's been shortlisted for the London Olympic team and those who knew him when he started think it's about time. We took him under our wing and it became apparent pretty quickly that this guy really got something as, a, as an athlete. And we know that many athletes are going to be in London that have served bans in their countries and uh, they will be coming to London. So given that situation, David should be allowed to compete. He's good enough. He's still a strong professional cyclist. Miller has been cycling since his ban ended, becoming British road and time trial champion in 2007. But it's only since Dwayne Chambers forced the British Olympic Association to rethink its lifetime ban policy that he's been able to be selected. Ultimately, you know, the BOA is, is a BOA's team. It's the Olympic team, it's not a British cycling team. And the BOA decide what their policy is. They decide who's eligible. Um, and they sort of say, right, here, here they are, line up against the wall. And my job professionally is to pick the fastest team. It's not up to me to bring my own personal opinion into it. It's, it's my professional opinion, and that's what I'll do. And, and if you uh, make David Miller eligible out of the British riders at the moment, then he's got to be in the mix for the for selection. And I think it's pretty straightforward from my point of view. For a time, drug abuse was seemingly endemic in road cycling. Even Lance Armstrong, seven times winner of the Tour de France, was accused, although the allegations never substantiated. Despite testing, it remains a temptation, and there are those who think those bands, even temporarily, should never ride under the Olympic ban. I think uh, there is the perception that really the penalties for anti-doping now, the two-year penalties, are a joke. Um, they do not really reflect uh, the severity of, uh, of the offence of doping. But the members of High Wickham Cycling Club believe who better to counsel the next generation against steroids than someone whose career nearly ended because of them. As far as our club is concerned, he comes down, he, he's been at a few of our time trial events, he gets involved at, at the youth level as well. He's, he's a great motivator of young riders. And I think you don't see a lot of guys who have ended in the past doing that, investing their own time in that, you know, showing this is what you can do wrong, this is what you need to do to avoid these, those situations. Unlikely to win a medal himself, David Miller could make the difference for his teammates if he graduates from the shortlist to the team of five riders who will be announced later this month. It's a long road back from a drug span. For David Miller, the journey's not over yet. Neil Patterson, Sky News, team in Oxfordshire.